Some people think the IBM PC Junior runs only about this much software. You remember the commercials for computers in the 80s and 90s. They often portrayed the C64 as a fun gaming machine where they used a joystick. The PC was usually portrayed as a business machine. The commercials were most often about the amount of business software. Even the Tandy commercials downplayed the fact that the Tandy was a better gaming machine than most or maybe all other PC compatibles at the time. The joystick for the PC was analog and usually not as good as most joysticks for the C64 or any of the gaming consoles. With the gamepad LPT and SNES key you can use your favorite Atari style joystick or a Sega Genesis gamepad on your PC. Maybe you saw my first video where I did a quick test of the gamepad LPT on my Toshiba Pentium with the zip stick I used to play with on my Commodore 64. In the video we saw a demonstration of the gamepad LPT with a selection of games. In this video we will dive deeper and we will install the software in DOS and look at some of the settings in SNES key. We will also take a quick look at the Windows software. If you like my videos please subscribe. It only takes one second to press the subscribe button. It will mean a lot to me. Thank you. The installation of the adapter is easy. Check the jumpers. These jumpers are set for the Sega Genesis with external power. You can actually use the same jumper settings for an Atari joystick, even if the manual says differently. Then you just plug it in your printer port and don't forget the USB power. Check your BIOS settings. In my experience, it works best in bi-directional mode, often called SPP. If possible, stay away of EPP and ECP. Also make sure that you are using IO address 378. If you are using a different address, this must be stated in the configuration file. I have done tests on four computers. One of them, a ThinkPad 600E, used a different IO address and there was no way of changing this in the BIOS. When running SNES key in test mode it worked fine, but I never got the gamepad to work with any of my games on this computer. Download SNES key and install it in any place you like. In the examples directory you will find configuration files for several controllers. We are using our Genesis 6 button gamepad, so we copy the Genesis 6.ini to the SNES key directory. When running SNES key it will by default load the SNES key.ini. If you want to start with a different configuration file, use the name of that file as a parameter. All settings not configured in your INI file will be loaded from snesky.ini. When adding the parameter slash x, you can test your settings. In my experience, you will need to add external power when using more than three buttons. This can change if your computer delivers more power than mine did. When not having enough power, your gamepad can work fine when using SNES key in test mode. But after a few minutes, your keys will misfire and behave strangely. One would expect that it would just stop registering key presses, but no. 
they could send false signals like a wrong button. In some cases, these fal false key presses would make my game freeze. If your gamepad behaves strangely, the first thing I would do is to make sure I have enough power. SNESKey.ini is the default configuration file. This file also gives you a list of possible settings. Some settings are self-explaining and some settings are very hard to explain. The SNESKey manual covers most of them, but not all. The setting that most often fixes problems is the key sim method. We can choose between old, new and the default, newest. The first thing I try when the gamepad is not working as expected is to change the setting to old. If that does not work, I will try new. I have fiddled with other settings, but they have not resolved any of the issues I have had. The main issue is that the gamepad does not behave as expected. If the game starts, but the gamepad is not responding at all, I will usually try the key sim method setting. If the game runs slow, I will try to change the thick freak. By default, it will ask the gamepad 60 times a second. Try with 30 or 20. By setting progpad to your game, you can automatically start your game. In my experience, this often don't work. So I prefer to load SNESKey with slash T so the program stays resident. When starting SNESKey with slash T to stay resident, you will have to reboot to try with new settings. The default repeat rate is 20. By adjusting this, you can disable repeat or make it slower. To use repeat on any key, you add repeat in front of the key. If you want to override the default repeat rate, you can do this by putting the desired rate in parentheses after the repeat directive. The configuration of the D-pad and the buttons are straightforward. You can use keys like num8 instead of up. According to the SNESKey manual, num8 is faster than the arrow keys. By using the shift directive, you can add alternative action to any button when pressed together with another. In this case, I'm using the mode button to give me control of game-specific keys to enter menus, control, sound, etc. SNESKey uses 64 kilobytes of memory. If you are using EMM386, you can load it high by typing LH in front. To automatically load SNESKey high, I have added LH to the go.bat. By typing go, it automatically loads SNESKey into high memory with the default settings from SNESKey.ini. The best way of using SNESKey is to add Norton Commander to progpat in SNESKey.ini. When typing go.bat, SNESKey is loaded into memory and starts Norton Commander. I can then browse to my game and start it. When the game exits, SNESKey is still in memory, with the same settings. When exiting Norton Commander, SNESKey is unloaded from memory, and I can start SNESKey again with different settings. On Server Shop, you will find a FAQ and a list of games that is tested and their settings. SNESKey for Windows does not support Atari joysticks or Genesis gamepads. The Windows 2000 program PPJoy has support for Windows 98 and Millennium Edition. 
It works with the GamePad LPT with both Atari joysticks and Genesis GamePads. Here I am using the Genesis GamePad in one of my favorite games from the 90s. The good thing about using GamePad LPT from Windows is that there is no settings or tweaks. You install the driver and Windows take care of the rest. I liked making this video and I hope you liked watching it. Check out my other videos. They are usually about DOS retro gaming or tips and tricks for retro computers. Take care.